you guys. Um, I'm ready whenever you are. All okay. right. Glenn? Paul? Thanks for being in the circle with me today. Absolutely. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Anytime. Who were your heroes as a kid? Talk about a hero. A woman named Evelyn LaFond. And I remember, this was in 1972, so she obviously made an impression. Uh, but Evelyn ran what was called the proof and transit area of the bank. Essentially, it's the bowels. And Evelyn was really in charge of all that backroom function. And during my internship, she said, you're gonna learn this bank from the bowels up. You're gonna know everything that goes on down here. And she made me follow her around and learn every single function of that bank. So then when I graduated, they offered me a job. I absolutely understood how it worked ground floor up. Mm -hmm. But one of the really important lessons that I learned is I think every job that I took after that, one of my first things to do was to find out who's really running the place at the bottom, at the ground floor, and learn what they know to really know how the place works. Um, customer service, take the phone calls, learn how you get yelled at, go to the back and learn how the trucking and distribution and all of that works. And then as I progressed through into management roles, I actually knew how to do those jobs. And I found that invaluable and it's a, a lesson that I took throughout my entire career. And you're gonna be a better executive I believe when you get to that level and that stage of your, your life for having learned things from the bottom up. A big hero of mine, and, and my family never understood it because it didn't quite make sense, was now Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, then Lou Alcindor. Newspapers started covering him. He played at Power Memorial in New York in high school and he was seven feet tall before anybody was five feet tall. And so he stuck out like a sore thumb, and he was a little gawky and different. And I started following him when he was in high school and rooting for him, and followed him when he went to college at UCLA. And um, it wasn't popular to be a Milwaukee Bucks fan when they came to play the New York Knicks. My father would tell you uh, that there was a particular time I cheered for Lou Alcindor dunking. Uh, as a rookie and somebody threw beer at us in the, in the Madison Square Garden watching the game. Uh, but I just always admired the guy and have continued to do so uh, you know, as he went through his career and also his personal challenges and also his inspirational message about relations between uh, religions and about what his faith means to him. And um, you know, unlike Mickey Mantle died and, and, and others, who I really looked up to disappeared. The guy never disappeared. I've always admired him. I was with my first company. It was a small company called Goldberg Brothers in Chicago. The people that owned the company, two guys named Bob and Dave Goldberg, they were mentors to me. They were people that taught me about values, about always uh, honoring your word. And these are the days when you're in the pits of futures trading, you know, the trading pits, and you wrote down your trade on a card. And blue was the buy side and red was the sell side. And if I was trading corn with you, I wrote down I bought 10,000 bushels from Paul Grandgard at this price. And then you turned it in. But there was nothing to prevent you the next day from saying, well, I never did that trade. And that never happened. And one of the things that I learned from them is your word is your bond. Their view was do the right thing. Step up and honor your word, even if the other person isn't. And that was a lesson that I learned and I carry with me today. My hero was my father, still is today. And he grew up in a very tough family environment. Uh, he didn't graduate from high school, joined the Marines when he was 17, went to Korea, came back on the GI Bill, got his education, got married, started his family, you know, was a self-made man. He's been through good times and bad times. Um, but through all of that, uh, he's always put his family first. Who were your heroes when you were young? You know, one of the people who was really influential for me early on was a professor at Carleton College called Paul Wellstone, who later went on to become a United States Senator. And, you know, one of the things he said uh, in one of the classes I took from him, you know, there's a bunch of students kind of all lamenting how difficult it is to make change in the world and kind of wringing their hands a little bit. And he turned to our class and said, if the people in this room can't change the world, who can? And that always resonated, resonated with me and helped me begin to think about the idea that I could help 
try to change some part of the world for the better. I had a particular uh, boss at Sports Illustrated in my young days at Sports Illustrated was the business manager of Sports Illustrated, who was also a University of Chicago MBA, and he was the guy who had recruited me on campus, and he kind of followed me as I got to the company and ultimately hired me, and just a great, one of those persons who was more interested in developing people than in aggrandizing themselves and going on to bigger and better things, really was a, a teacher. The CEO I ultimately worked for uh, the last five years of my career, what I loved about him is he was a total fish out of water. He was a Birmingham, Alabama guy who came to New York and, you know, relatively unsophisticated in the ways of New York City, but he was whip smart and I always loved about him that he would uh, look at a problem, he could analyze a problem, and he could come up with the right answer. The numbers just spoke to him. And in New York City, you go to work at Diamond Corporate, you're surrounded by Ivy League people and East Coast people, and I, that wasn't me. So I really admired the way that he came and just kind of took charge and became so admired and such an effective leader. He's the greatest CEO the company ever had. I think about the people that have had the most impact on my life. And I would say I've had a couple of teachers, you know, one in high school in particular and one in college, that they were passionate about learning, uh, they took an interest in their students, that their students were important to them. I really admired that. I think that's a key quality of leadership is are the people that you're leading, are the people that are following you, are they thriving, are they learning? And I think the people that um, taught me in high school and college were, were big inspirations to me. In terms of personal heroes, I had the models so close to me that you know that I could reach out and touch them every day. I had the privilege growing up to be around my father and grandfather a lot. You know, if somebody compares me to those guys, that's the highest compliment. If you believe in the concept of charisma, my grandfather, he was a guy that had it. If that old man tells me it's going to rain soup, I go outside with a bucket. <laughs> being around my dad. He always talked about himself as being a golden rule guy. He said, you know what? He goes, you, you'll get yourself through life doing just fine if you'll just go about treating people the way you'd like to be treated.